Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Indie Rundown YouTube page. I'm Zach, and today we're here to do a very quick movie review for the new film, Captain Marvel. Now, for those of you who aren't superhero comic book fans, the synopsis is Carol Danvers becomes one of the universe's most powerful heroes when Earth is caught in the middle of a galactic war between two alien races. Now, this film was directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, two up-and-coming directors, and it shows in parts because my first overall impressions of this movie is it was alright, man. It was alright. You know, it's nothing to write home about. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad, though. It was kind of middle of the pack for me. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. Now, with that being said, let's get into the pros real quick. Now, these are things that I liked, things I enjoyed, things that stood out to me. Um, first off is Sam Jackson as Nick Fury. Loved the performance, loved the character. I was a little weary going in on how much screen time he would get in the finished film, but I was surprised, man, because he's pretty much a main character in this movie. I was pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed it. He had a lot of screen time, a lot of dialogue, a lot of action. It was kind of cool to see Nick Fury in his younger days, you know, before he turned into the Nick Fury that we know now, the cynical guy, the, uh, the hard-nosed rebel against the government guy. So it was cool to explore a new side of Nick Fury. Uh, Phil Coulson, we got very little of him, but it was so refreshing to see him back on the big screen interacting with Nick Fury. I loved it, and I ate up every second of it. Um, Jude Law was great. I loved the performance of him and Jan Rog. Spoiler alert, I didn't see that twist coming, him turning out to be the bad guy, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was very well written. It was nice to see them not waste him as a one-off villain this time, so who knows? Maybe he'll stick around and come back. But yeah, uh, other things I liked was the Captain Marvel character in general. I really liked her backstory and how she became who she was. I thought they played that very well, and I thought it all tied together greatly. It was a little deviation from the comics. Um, they kind of went a different route, but I enjoyed it. Ben Mendelsohn was great as Talos. He's kind of the main villain, and spoiler alert again, he kind of doesn't turn out to be the villain. He's actually a good guy, and it's kind of a deviation from what Ben Mendelsohn usually does. He's usually the villain, the bad guy, but it was nice to see him take on a new character like this, and I thought uh, we'll, get, we'll get more into the scrolls here in a minute, but... Um, yeah, uh, Goose the Cat was cool. I really enjoyed the cat. I know a lot of people are losing their minds about the cat and, you know, talking so much shit about the cat, but I didn't think it was that damn bad, guys. Come on, man. It could be worse. But yeah, the last thing I really liked about this movie was the mid credit sequence with uh, Black Widow, Captain America, Bruce Banner, and James Rhodes. They're looking at the little pager, and she turns around, and there's Captain Marvel. So it's like, holy shit, what's going to happen with those guys? I cannot wait to find out what happens there. And all it does is just raises my anticipation level for Endgame. So those are the pros. Let's move on to the cons, the things I didn't like, the things I didn't enjoy. Most notably was Brie Larson's performance. No disrespect to Brie Larson, man. She seems like a nice girl. She seems like a really talented actress, but I just wasn't feeling it in some scenes from her. You know, I'm a film director myself, and I really like to explore what's going on in the actors' and actresses' heads. Getting inside, knowing the characters, getting the wheels turning, really delving into what makes this character tick. And I just really feel like, I don't know if it's the writing or the directing or her delivery, I just wasn't feeling it. There were so many scenes where I was like, come on, you just, you're almost there, Brie Larson, just get there. Give me a little bit more, but I just wasn't getting it from her. It was very wooden dialogue delivery. She was very stoic in certain scenes. I just, I really felt that a lot of the supporting characters acted better in the scenes that she was in, that she was supposed to be carrying. So, I don't know, man. Something was off about it. Like I said, chalk it up to bad writing, bad directing. I don't know. But hey, we got what we got. It is what it is. No reason to lose your minds over it. Nothing you can do about it. Um, one thing I didn't like was really the scrolls twist is how the scrolls are really supposed to be good guys now At least that's what they're saying But I've thought a little more about it And hey Talos and his refugees that's one little group of scrolls man There could be other rogue scrolls evil scrolls somewhere across the galaxy or in another universe So I'm still holding out hope for a secret invasion movie So maybe they could just focus on a new set of scrolls guys that are ruthless cutthroat assassins that can come invade earth so I'm not losing my mind too much about the scrolls being good. You know, it is what it is. And the last the last con I have about this movie is Fury losing his eye. Now that's something that's been blowing up the internet back and forth. There's so much controversy surrounding that. I've heard so many people losing their minds over it. And it's like, at the end of the day, what can you do about it, man? There's nothing you can do about it. We gotta take what we were given. Now here's the thing, I was a little bit disappointed. It's not the way I would have wanted him to lose his eye because I thought after all these years, he, he was probably in a huge, brutal war 
took a knife or took a gun right to the fucking face and lost his eye, you know. But, oh, no, he just gets scratched by a cat. And, honestly, I was telling a buddy of mine when we saw this yesterday, it's like, I kind of... It doesn't surprise me, man. That's that's totally a Marvel thing to do. It's like, you expect one thing, and it's like, oh, no, it's just a cat. It's like, oh, okay. Very underwhelming, but like I said, what can you do? But, um, yeah, those are the pros and cons for Captain Marvel, in my opinion. But overall, I think it's a solid addition to the franchise. It's a typical solo origin movie. I mean, I wasn't expecting to be blown away. I didn't. I wasn't expecting Avengers Endgame caliber. I was just, my, my expectations were low. And I wasn't really disappointed. Like I said, it's it's middle of the pack. If I were to do my franchise rankings again, it'd probably be in the middle. So, not bad, not good. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. That's all we need to know. But as far as ratings, I'm going to give Captain Marvel a 6 out of a 10. So yeah, that's going to do it, man. Full steam ahead for Avengers Endgame. We got about a little over a month. And as we get closer to the premiere of Endgame, we're going to be doing a lot more Endgame content, theories, speculations, shit like that. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're going to have so much more stuff coming out. And we can't wait to share it with you guys. But yeah, I'm Zach for the Indie Rundown Podcast. Follow us everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're out.